Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is David Hale. I'm a global fellow at the, here at the Wilson Center, and I'm very honored to have, be joined today by His Excellency the Foreign Minister of Lebanon, Abdullah Habib, a uh, great distinguished statesman and an old friend. So it's wonderful to have you here. This is part of our uh, our series of, uh, of events related to our Lebanon Ideas Forum, in which the Wilson Center is committed to making sure that Lebanon is not forgotten in the debates on the Middle East and U.S. foreign policy uh, here in Washington. So thank you very much for taking time out on your busy schedule. Thank you for having me. So, thank thank you. you. Well, um, there's so much to talk about in Lebanon, both internally what's happening uh, on the domestic scene and the, the impasse over the election of a president, uh, the economic crisis, a financial uh, lack of confidence in the financial sector are issues that concern us here in the United States. And also Lebanon, I know, feels very greatly the developments in the Middle East and how that, that is reflected upon the scene in, in Lebanon. So maybe we could start with what's happening internally in Lebanon and share your thoughts with us. On the politically, mm. the presidential scene, you know, in Lebanon, the parliament elects the president. And in the first uh, round, the eight, two thirds of the parliament, we have a parliament of 128 members of parliament. Uh, two thirds, which is 86, should vote for president to become president for one person. The second round, uh, it should be it should follow immediately. It would be a simple majority, half plus one, but the quorum should be 86. That we have a hang uh, parliament that cannot is divided. It cannot elect a president unless there is a compromise, and the compromise process did not start yet. It has uh, taken time. We have been like eight months without president. Uh, before, we, have, we stayed two and a half years without president. You recall you were there, uh, that uh, vacuum. And uh, I don't know when it's going to end. Uh, it could end overnight, but it may take time also to end. Well, um, we wish you well with that. We know this is a problem, as you mentioned, uh, every, every six years there's, a, there's usually a crisis over the presidency. Uh, speaking personally, I mean, my own thoughts are that while the vacancy is a very bad thing, uh, choosing the wrong president could be even worse. Uh, what are your thoughts you're on right. that? I think you're right. That's why or a president that half of the country does not want is very dangerous. It should be a consensus uh, president, a consensual president that is agreed upon that by most of the population. How do you reach that kind of agreement? I think there is, I mean, the, the main uh, party is the Shiite duality, the two-part Shiite party that control all the parliamentarians, Shiite parliamentarians in the parliament. And on the other side, there are the, the change parliamentarians, and there are the Christian, traditional Christian uh, uh, blocks or parties. I think there should be between them all some kind of a negotiations in order to reach a person that is acceptable to all. Mm -hmm. To get to 65 plus one, you 65 need to include and, everyone. And, yeah. and a quorum. Yes. And a quorum. Yeah. And by that time, if they agree, all of them, there would be, he or she would be elected by, from the first session. Well, you know, one of the concerns we have in the United States, and I think in other capitals where, where there's a friendly disposition toward Lebanon, is that without a president, you don't have a fully functioning government. Without a fully functioning government and a president, you can't tackle the serious reforms that are needed to get the economy back on track. Can you project ahead, if we do succeed in seeing Lebanon get a president and government, what will be the next steps in terms of uh, the economic agenda? I think the next step, the government should seriously work hard in order to reform the banking sectors and central bank. These are the really backbone of the economy, and they, are collab they have collapsed. And unless you put them back in order, there is no confidence in the banking sector. The people receive a lot of dollars, and they don't put them in the banks. They, they hoard them. And now our economy is dollarized. Let's say you go to a grocery store, you pay in dollars. You go to a restaurant, you pay in dollars. You, you get a plumber. He will charge you in dollars. You may give him in Lebanese currency, but at the market exchange rate. So uh, <laughs> we need to reform, really, the banking sector and central bank oh. before can, anything can move on. Is there political support for those kinds of reforms? There wasn't. I mean, don't forget, as you mentioned, this is a government, uh, caretaker government. It's not a fully, it's not even half-fledged government without president. It is not really, it is 
like a resigned cabinet, but has to take care of important things in the country. Uh, so it cannot take many decisions. Uh, the Constitution does not allow it to take it. So uh, we're still obeying, to a large extent, the Constitution, which is good uh, in Lebanon. So it is uh, very difficult. It depends on the president and the prime minister how serious they're going to be and how well they work together in order to enforce mm -hmm. uh, reform in the economy. Thank you, Minister. I, I was struck when I visited Lebanon right after the port explosion. I went directly to one of the sites that had been so heavily damaged. And uh, there were protesters there, not against me, but against the government, uh, and demanding that we not bail out the Lebanese government because they were holding the government accountable for the errors that had occurred, and indeed for corruption. And the fear was that any foreign assistance could be subject to continued uh, malfeasance by government officials. How do you see the corruption issue being tackled effectively in Lebanon? Well, no, there isn't much money to be much corruption. <laughs> So nobody is giving the government, no, no foreign aid is receiving, is being received by the government. And therefore, really, there are no big projects, and no, not much corruption, if any. Even at the lower level of the government, if there are tips to be given for uh, giving a service or so, it's all stopped because the government uh, offices are almost, almost empty because the, the salaries... A uh, month's salary is not enough for one employee to come to work paying for gasoline, uh, to, to come to work. So it's a very difficult times for government employees. Yes, it is. While private sector has accommodated itself, they pay salaries in dollars and Lebanese currency, and uh, they're, they're working, but not the government. Mm -hmm. The government is not working mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we could turn to the regional level and get your thoughts, Mr. Minister, on uh, what's happening uh, throughout the Middle East, particularly relations between the Iranians and the Saudis and the Syrians, and how that is reflected on Lebanon. Well, let's see. Lebanon is the, the first and only open country in the region. So any two countries fighting in the region, it reflects uh, adversely on Lebanon. Any two countries making peace between them, and uh, it reflects positively on Lebanon. So now we applaud all uh, uh, good intentions, good agreements, uh, like the Chinese agreement uh, between Saudi Arabia and Iran. And if there is peace in Yemen, it's good for us as well. So, uh, and if there is peace between Israel and the Palestinians, it's excellent for us, not only good. So it is very difficult times for us because uh, but and, uh, let me say anything, is that in the recent months, uh, there is some kind of will from major Arab countries, especially the Saudi Arabia, to take our problems into our hands and try to solve them. I don't know whether we succeed or not. I pray that we succeed. And, uh, but there is this attempt, especially that the United Nations or the international community failed to solve, for example, the Palestinian problem. 242 and 338 have not been implemented. 425 was not implemented as a result of obeying the law, which is on the, between Lebanon and Israel. Mm -hmm. And so 2254 on Syria, okay, also United, United Nations Security Council resolution. I mean, they, the United Nations, this has been taken in 2015. Now, eight years later, nothing has happened. So say, maybe we can do something. And they are trying to do something in order to, to rehabilitate Syria yeah. into the Arab League and into the world community, yeah. if possible. I hope so. I know Lebanon has adhered to a policy of dissociation from the conflict in Syria, but unfortunately the spillover of the war has brought a heavy price to, to, to Lebanon, and in particular the, the refugee issue. What's your message to the American uh, government on that? Well, our message is that the refugees, which is somewhere between one and a half to two million, uh, and they are financed by Western countries, international community. Here is the West. And they, they are really a big threat to the essence of Lebanon. Lebanon is a Christian Muslim country that where, Lebanon, where both all of them live in good conditions and equal conditions. This is threatened by the, by the refugees. You have a community, you have almost half of them don't know Syria. 
and uh, you know uh, this means they'll become Lebanese. It's very very dangerous to the to the existence of Lebanon, and we started seeing that. Uh, and, and we hope that the United States would help us. The Europeans, some of the European countries are not cooperating with us, are not even dialoguing with us on this issue. They, they thought that the, the share, burden sharing is that you keep them and we pay. No, this is not burden sharing. And, and no matter how much they pay, we are paying more. The cost, the infrastructure cost, whether it is in education in schools, whether it's in roads, whether it is in garbage collection and drainage, whether it is in health, all of this is a cost to the Lebanese government that nobody is compensating it for. And what they pay, like a European country pay $100, $100 million or so, that's no contribution. The World Bank estimated that the cost to Lebanon in 2013 was $3 billion a year. Now they are doing a, another estimate, and I think it would be 5 to $6 billion Even higher. Dollar a year. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a terrible, terrible burden that you're paying. So without, uh, it's a stressful time in Lebanon. I mean, we don't uh, have president, uh, government situation is as you described, the financial situation you've described. You've got the refugee burden, a lack of clarity about the region. The United States wants to be a partner, but we don't really have a strong partner without a president. Um, we do continue to work with the Lebanese army and the internal security forces and many uh, private sector entities. Uh, what would be uh, your, your request to the United States? What would you like us to see, to see us to be doing? Well, continue to support the Lebanese army because the, and security forces because they are back, the backbone of the country. And if, this, if the Lebanese army broke down, this means Lebanon could be like five countries. Uh, worse than the situation between Israel and the Palestinians, uh, because each one would kind of declare semi-independence, and each one would be armed, and the fighting would go on, and God knows what, uh, what, what would happen. So it's very important to support the Lebanese army and Lebanese security forces, and that's what the U.S. is doing and should continue doing. But the administration is being really... Uh, in bad shape, and uh, it should work with the Europeans in order to help the administration, the government administration, stay intact. Not stay intact, they are not intact. The, to, to really rehabilitate it in order to, for them to come to work, to help them come to work one way or another. The, the Europe, I talked over with the Europeans and there is no, no, uh, no positive response in this, uh, in this sense. So it is a very difficult times, and we need to help to keep the country united. Of course, the help should come from us first, but the world community cannot leave it uh, when we are failing in order also to fail its support for Lebanon. Because it's, I think it's important for regional security, regional uh, and world security in order for Lebanon to remain united and that we have good security system. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Minister, for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.